on the eve of the primary here in Columbia, the Black Conservative Federation held their annual honors gala, where Trump made his plea to the community. If you want strong borders, safe neighborhoods, rising wages, good jobs, great education, and the return of the American dream, then congratulations, you are a Republican. It's pretty simple. <laughs> Joe Biden and the radical left have abandoned everything black Americans care about. They've, uh, they've really let you down. Look, we all understand it. They've thrown black Americans overboard, and it's been uh, not a pretty thing to watch. You take a look at some of these inner cities. But I and the Republican Party will fight for the black community like you have never had anybody fight for you before. Fox and Friends co-host Lawrence Jones was there talking to attendees as well as the president of the United States, and he joins us now. What's up, man? Hey, good morning, family. Uh, so I've been talking about it for a while. You need someone to go into the community that's electric. You can't have the stale, t uh, typical Republican party. Don't send gonna, Mitch McConnell. You can't send him. You're not going <laughs> to win black voters that way. There's this new wave of people, and they call themselves Trumpicans. You know, they're not a typical Republicans, but they like his style, they like his tenor, they like the economy, and they like what he's going to do on the board. I had the opportunity to talk with some black Republicans yesterday. They're going to vote for Donald Trump. This is what they have to say. Watch. Biggest event of the year. Looks like there is a massive support around uh, black voters going to Donald Trump. Why is that? The black community wants a leader who has the energy to actually go to bat for the issues that they want to fight for. And we see that in Donald Trump. We don't necessarily see that from Joe Biden. Um, President Donald Trump is visible. He's taking challenging questions. And the people feel like if he's reelected, that he'll have the energy, he'll have the charisma to get up and go and fight for the issues. What do you think is going to be the number one issue that drives black folks to the polls? Well, it has to be the economy. I think everyone is suffering right now. Economy. Yeah. You can't fool what happens at the grocery store. We have a lot of people in the room today from Chicago. We have people from New York, and we have also have people that are in Texas, from where you're from, that are tired of what we're seeing with the migrant issue. Joe Biden's policies are putting you know, Im illegal immigrants ahead of the urban voters, of urban, the black community here. So it looks like there's a shift amongst black folks, and it looks like more and more are going for the Republican Party. Why now? You know, I think the Biden administration has really, in the last four years, I was just having a conversation at the table. It's like the whole house has is in shambles. I think most black people are trying to look for something different. Um, and a lot of us are waking up, especially black men, and we're waking up uh, to what the Democrat Party has been doing to us for so many years. You can see what Biden is doing right now, making promises, but in reality, nothing is changing. We've been hearing hope and change for a long time now, and there hasn't been a real hope and change at the ground level. President Trump is the only person that can get the job done. He's in the communities. He's actually putting forth an effort to capture the black vote. He's putting forth uh, an effort to fight for the issues that we've been pushing for for decades. Black people just need to come and, and realize that the Republican Party is not the enemy. Mm -hmm. And really just pay attention to what's going on, the pure facts of what's going on right now with this administration. It is time to really just open your eyes. And the Republican Party is not the enemy. It's good on this side of the fence. So one thing when I, and we're going to play the exclusive interview with, with the former president uh, later on in the show, but one of the things I asked him is what he's going to do when it comes to the black community. When you see what's happening, this pivot, are you going to go into these cities? And when you talk with him, he says, just watch me. We got some stuff cooking up. He's supposed to be having a rally in the Bronx. So, I mean, I don't think you've ever seen a Republican candidate that goes in the hood. And I think that's important. If you got a president of the United States, former president, that is going to Chicago, going to Harlem, going to the Bronx, going to South Dallas, and rallying the troops, the men and women that feel like they're forgotten as well. The, mm -hmm. the same stories that I hear from urban America is the same uh, stories I hear from the, urban, uh, the middle America diners. And if the president can paint that picture for them, I think we got a big Real quick, connection. Lawrence, we hear about black men. Yeah. Um, is your sense it is men or is it men and women? In I think it is mostly men. I think the Democratic Party Hi. has focused on the base when it comes to black women are their best and they're giving them everything that they want. But the black men feel like the family is under threat. They don't like what's happening in crime and the legal immigration issue is going to blow this wide, wide open. When you have kids that are being kicked out of their rec centers and in their schools and they're saying that they don't have enough funding for that and all of a sudden they find funding for the legals, I think these brothers 
brothers are not liking that too much. Well, I would say that in 2016, during that, during his first term, he was pretty. Donald Trump was pretty good to the black community. He came through with HBSC, the historically black colleges funding. He did a, um, you know, the wages for black Americans, the home ownership went up, and it seemed like Hispanics were the ones who made a difference. You know, not enough apparently, but in 2020, you saw a real shift in Hispanics. Do you think this that what is happening in terms of crime and again illegal immigration is really enough to have them turn their backs from the Democrat Party? Look, I'm we never going to see that in large numbers I'm, in the last election. I, I'm never going to lie to the audience and say, "Hey, there's going to be this massive uh, right. 40 percent, 50 percent difference." But I think, that, you listen, this is a marathon. For a while, there was no Republicans in the community talking about these issues. But I do think he got record number last year, uh, the last election that he ran. I think he could get up to 25 to 30 percent. If that happens... It's a game changer. Well, even that's it. Yes, yeah, even done. increase yeah, 5, you know? 7, 10 yeah. percent is yeah. a huge thing, no doubt. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.